The next speaker is an old friend of mine. He is the one who had the patience to keep me in the shape and the form I'm in to be able to be a man who loves his games. But he's also one of the most talented photographers you're ever going to meet. Peter Hardlove, Osprey, Lord Fish Eagle, an intimate view of an Osprey family. He's been photographing nature for about 30 years, and his goal is capturing the awe of nature both above and below the water. Over the past five years, he's photographed all aspects of a farm here in Longmont that has been in the same family for 150 years. And believe you me, being from Nebraska, that doesn't happen too often. And is working on a photographic publication for this journey. These photographs that we're about to see is part of that endeavor. Let's give Peter a warm welcome. Hey, there you go, buddy. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and lower the lights because <laughs> their show is up here. You handsome devil. Yeah. It's not a beautiful bird. Oh, yes. um, as Greg said, I've spent the last five and a half years on a farm um, just on the St. Brain here working on a photographic um, journey. And the farm has been in the same family for the past 150 years, and I'm trying to capture everything there that I can. John, the fourth generation and the last generation to farm this land, had put up an osprey pole nest the um, year before, unbeknownst to me. When I returned from a trip the first of April, he informed me that we had a, an osprey pair making a nest. Well, that was pretty exciting to me. I hadn't dealt with osprey before. I ran over the next morning and I was immediately rewarded with getting to uh, visualize and ca capture the pair mating. Uh, they came independently from Texas or Mexico and met and uh, found this nest and defended it. John, I've got to be able to get up closer to these birds. <laughs> and he's been very patient with me and said, well, I've got this old rusty scaffolding I haven't put up in years. Let's try and do that. So we beat and cajoled this thing to death and got it built. And then John uh, moved it within a uh, good distance for me to get some photographs. First order of business is to build a nest. I included this shot just because I just love the view from underneath and the patterns of those wings and the colors. The nest is made of twigs and branches and dirt and unfortunately twine. Um, but once that's built, um, about the 1st of May, the female will start sitting on her eggs. Once she's on the eggs, the only time she gets off is when the male will come and bring her some food. <clears throat> He'll sit on the eggs and she'll come down uh, to these fence posts and feed. So I immediately had to build a blind to put near these fence posts so I could get some close-ups. This is all ruffled up. <laughs> I was so close sometimes that um, she could hear, hear the shutter of my camera and would give me a glaring look wondering what was going, going on there. All birds of prey are very intense. <laughs> after about uh, 25 days, they, they hatch. Um, this is about, a, after about a week or so, I can get a view of them. Um, and I can tell how much they're gonna have to change and grow, grow up before they'll fly. And it's fun to see the pin feathers when they're first coming out. The male's job is to feed the entire family for over six weeks. So he has to feed himself and the female and all the offspring. Um, and he stays busy uh, most of the summer. Seems like he's bringing fish in constantly. The female's job is to protect, shade, and feed the offspring. They can eat up to six pounds of fish a day each before they fledge. So there's a lot of work being done. Jesus. 
one year we had four offspring. <clears throat> I don't know how the male got through that, <laughs> but he did. Um, but, but they grow rapidly um, and become more and more voracious in their eating. The very full nest. Eventually they're going to have to learn to fly and they start beating their wings and unfortunately they sometimes they'll beat on their si siblings' heads. Um, but in breezes they can actually lift off that nest and start to get the feel of the flying before they actually fly. Eventually, they've got to make the leap of faith and they've got to jump off that nest. They're actually pretty good flyers. It's landing that becomes pro pro problematic. Um, when they're young, they don't have the strength to hold, hold their legs up against their body. After the first year, I said, John, we need an epic perch. And he's so patient, he looked at me and said, what are you talking about? Rather than sitting on the scaffolding and messing up my scaffolding, they need a proper perch, something that they, they can use. So John, in his creative way, came up with this simple, elegant uh, perch. It was immediately used. Uh, when they came back the next year, they were on this thing immediately. It allowed me to get some nice uh, photographs of the male uh, feeding. Nothing in paradise lasts, though. Red-winged blackbirds are notorious for harassing birds of prey and other large birds. And um, there was a colony near, nearby, and this poor male just got beat and beat and beat. And as, this, as the season went on, he used the perch less and less and less. The offspring are not immune to this either. <clears throat> They're trying to fly, and the blackbirds jumps on their back and starts picking on them. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's hard enough to learn to fly, but they've got to learn to deal with this kind of uh, harassment as, as, as well. This is the full nest with the four offspring just before fledging with the mother in the center. It's quite a full nest. I've learned to appreciate the teamwork and the cooperation that, these, that this pair does, and they come back year after year and keep raising more young. And it's a, it's a struggle, but they get it done. Great, good photos, fantastic. All right, thanks, Peter. That was fantastic. Great.